It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Jolene has a question. She says, Love what? Love your song. What's that? Nothing. Keep going. You were going to sing the song. I did. I was. I was going to See, I was going to not do that because Jolene probably gets that all the I time. I know. Sorry. <laughs> Fantastic song, though. Not a bad association. Interesting uh, little tidbit. One of mine and Brian's favorite songs. What, like, if, we, if we listed out all of our favorite songs, be on, be on the top ish of both of our lists. Really? Yep. I would never have known that. I'm glad to know it. Glad to tell so, you. So, anyway, Jolene's question. She says, what is your hot take on long-term care insurance? Mm. Is it worth the premium, or are you better off to self-insure? Mm. Okay, long-term care insurance. So, so first, uh, you know, so I'm assuming you know what long-term care insurance is. Long, long-term yeah. care insurance is the insurance you get that will pay for you later in life if you have to go into, like, if you need nursing care, skilled home nurse, you know, something where... You need someone to help you be able to live the daily functions of your life. I'm, I'm probably oversimplifying that explanation, but that's basically what long-term care insurance is. Well, as we're all living longer and as we're seeing more like, uh, I'm going to call it like cognitive decline diseases that are becoming more prevalent. We're having experience with loved ones entering into those kind of things. A lot of people are thinking about long-term care insurance. Man, mm-hmm. I'm really nervous about if I need to go into skilled, I don't want to be a burden to my family. I don't want to like spin down all of our wealth. So should we do long-term care insurance? Well, here's here's the problem with it. It's it's pretty expensive and it's getting more expensive. Back in the day, you know, rewind 20 years ago, I don't think insurance companies really knew how to price these things. They, you know, they were they were putting together long-term insurance policies with really great benefits at really low costs. Well, we've seen the cost of healthcare increase. And people living longer. And so now these policies are like, oh boy, insurance companies say we have a problem. And so it's not uncommon. We've seen a lot of our clients who had policies from 10, 15, 20 years ago now start to see increases in their premiums. So now it's becoming very, very cumbersome. You know, we, we here are fee only financial advisors. We don't sell any insurance, we just consult on it. But we do have some clients that are in the insurance brokerage world, they, that's what they do for a living. They say long-term care insurance is one of the hardest insurances to sell because everybody wants it. Everybody likes the idea and the theory of it. But when it comes to brass tax, actually writing that premium check is not something that a lot of people want to do. In our opinion, there's sort of a donut hole that exists where we think long-term care insurance makes a lot of sense. If you're someone who has uh, a total net worth or what I'm going to say is consumable net worth of less than a million dollars... Uh, now, this isn't a hard and fast number. This is just like our flavor of a number. It's really expensive, and it's kind of burdensome to be able to go out and pay that premium, depending on what your other sources of income are. Now, if you have pensions and Social Security and that kind of thing, and your standard of living is covered by that, but if you have less than a million dollars and you're living off of those assets, long-term care insurance can be a very sizable number that you're paying for. So in most circumstances that we've seen, it's just too expensive to justify well, then on the other end of the coin, if you're over $3 million, $4 million of total net worth, there's a really good chance that even if you were to receive skilled nursing or you were not going to go into a nursing home, there's a good chance that you have enough assets to where you can self-insure. It's really those folks that are in like that $1 million to $3 to $4 million range where we see most people most likely to end up purchasing a long-term care insurance policy. And so then you have to answer some questions. All right, if I look at my genealogy, if I look at my parents, my aunts, my uncles, my grandparents, what takes them out at the end? Is it like a massive cardiac event or is it dementia, early Alzheimer? Or, or, you know, is it, the, are, is it the types of diseases that require this or, you know, genealogically, is it something else? And you kind of weigh the likelihood and probability of you needing that. And then you have to just run the quote uh, and people always ask, well, how much do I quote? Here's what I would do. Man, I'm going, I don't mean to be going long on this question. No, it's a good details to Here, have. Here's what I would do. I, I, in your area, the area we live, I'd call the nicest nursing home facility that you think you'd want to live in, right? So they're, and they're not all created equal. Some have nursing. Some is just like basic apartment living for people that are, that are, that are, are more advanced in age. Figure out kind of what it looks like. And I'd ask them, hey, how much does this cost? Is it three grand a month? Is it eight grand a month? Is it 1,500? You know, figure out what that number is. And then say, okay, if I had to foot the bill for this, It'd be great if I had, you know, $3,000 benefit coming in and I could cover whatever the difference is. And I'd go get a quote on that. That's how you figure out what your quote is. And then if you're in that donut hole where long-term care insurance might make sense, 
I would consider, uh, I would, you know, consider, do, d- can I justify the cost versus the perceived benefit that I would get? Now, all that to say, I understand it is changing, right? There, there are new policies coming out. Again, we have a lot of friends in the insurance world. Now there are even like single premium where you can just take a chunk of money and drop it in today in order to provide a long-term care benefit. As with most things, you got to get a quote, see the cost, project it out, and determine what makes sense. Uh, if you're asking for my hot take on long-term care, I think most people don't buy it. That, that's my hot take. Most people, we work through the exercise, we do the analysis, we determine the exposure, and when it comes down to brass tacks, we say, okay, here, here's everything. We've laid out all the scenarios. What do you want to do? They say, okay, I, I don't, I don't think I want to. I, th- I don't think I want to proceed. And that's the way a lot of our conversations end up going. But you got to do the work before you can get there. Right. And is it because, you know, they already have a financial plan that's kind of helped them hit financial independence a lot of the time? That's, and, you know, right. A lot of people say, oh, I need, uh, I'm going to make up a number. I need $8,000 a month to live off of in retirement. Okay, well, great. We have proven that your financial assets can survive all the way out until age 95, providing you with a standard of living equal to $8,000. We have a high probability of success. Well, even if you had to go into like nursing home, skilled nursing care, your life expenses are probably going to drop because you're not doing all the things that you were, and you're going to replace that expense with the cost of that facility. Right. It still might so, be enough to cover. That's right. Depending it, on where you're at. With that's that. exactly right. Yeah. For, for the majority of cases that we run through, that's that's what we see. 